It's a horrific illness and Hawaii Island is the epicenter. Experts are on a quest to learn about and conquer rat lungworm disease, but it's an uphill battle. On February 18th, U.S. Senator Brian Schatz held a town hall meeting in Hilo, where he took questions from the crowd. It was a chance for residents to voice their concern on issues important to them. Kay Howe asked the senator for his support in the ongoing battle against rat lungworm disease. Hawaii is the epicenter for rat lungworm disease in the United States. It's generally assumed that most people become infected via accidental ingestion of an infected slug or snail on produce. However, the majority of victims here don't really know how they were infected. The affliction comes from a parasitic nematode that is transferred to humans by slugs or flatworms if their slime is ingested. For example, if the slime contaminates fruit or vegetables before they are eaten. This disease has called mortality and morbidity primarily on Hawaii islands where 90%, more than 90% of the cases occur. And as you know, Hawaii Island has the largest number of households on catchment in the state. This is no doubt costing the state of Hawaii enormous amounts of money toward hospitalization and long-term care and loss of income for victims and their families. These funds would be better put towards prevention by increased educational outreach and research. Senator Schatz, what could you do to help us initiate better cooperation, communication, and collaboration and funding by the CDC, the USDA, and the Hawaii State Departments of Health and Agriculture to bring this critical issue to the forefront to better protect the health and the residents of Hawaii? I, I actually got briefed about this issue on the way here, and I didn't quite understand the uh, sort of um, scale of this crisis on Hawaii Island and um, that's the bad news. The good news is that we have the College of Pharmacy and the University of Hawaii at Hilo uh, who's in a position to do something about it. And so um, without promising you know, uh, certain dollar amounts, um, I, I was thinking NIH, CDC, perhaps USDA, and the local Department of Health and, and the uh, uh, Department of Health and Human Services nationally um, are the right places to look. Howe's son, Graham, was infected with rat lungworm disease in 2008. He is a survivor, but his recovery continues. I now fully understand how, how much of a public health crisis it is. It, it is a definitely a public health crisis here on Hawaii Island, and, it, and it's not just affecting people, it's affecting farm animals, horses, dogs. Um, it really seriously needs to be addressed at this point in time, so thank you so much. Thank you. Although angiostrongylus, or rat lungworm disease, exists in other countries, in the United States, Hawaii Island is its epicenter, especially the Puna District. UH Hilo College of Pharmacy researcher Dr. Susan Jarvie is one of the country's foremost researchers in the disease. The definitive host, or the host in which the uh, worm replicates in, is the rat. Is okay. So, and, and the rat gets infected generally by eating infected slugs or snails. <laughs> and so the cycle, the normal cycle is the, the um, nematode will reproduce in the rat. It goes through the same types of processes that it does in humans, ends up in the brain. But in rats, um, and in most cases not in humans, uh, the worms migrate back down to the heart and lungs, and that's where they reproduce. And then the, uh, they, uh, uh, they lay eggs. The eggs eventually move to the trachea and are swallowed and those first stage larvae then are excreted in the feces of the rat. So rat poop is the, <laughs> is the thing, and um, uh, slugs and snails love to eat rat poop. Okay. So the normal cycle is from the rat to the slug and the snail, and then um, and, and in the slug or the snail, uh, it develops from the L1 stage to the L3 stage. And that L3 stage is, what, uh, is the stage that's infective to rats, but it's also infective to humans, dogs. We've had a lot of cases in horses that have had to be put down um, because the, the slug or possibly even the slime trail from the slug or the snail is infective. How does a person get rat lungworm disease? Many cases, uh, many cases they don't really know. So uh, some of the ones that we've spoken with think they got it from uh, the slug or the snail, even these, these slugs can be tiny. Meaning they ate the slug they or the snail? They ate the slug or the snail or a part of a slug or a snail. 
Flatworms are, are uh, really dangerous because when they, when you, if they're in a salad, for example, they can, they kind of dissolve, so you can, might not even see them, or you know these tiny, tiny little semi slugs, uh, you might not even see them. Can it come from the slime of the slug? Yeah, we've done uh, some testing on that as well, and um, the the amount of larva that's present in the slime is like tenfold less than what's in the slug itself. So the slime, it's questionable whether it would actually have enough parasites in it to be infective. But of course, you don't want to take that chance. Hilo Medical Center hospitalist Dr. John Martell has treated several patients with the disease. He says the symptoms can be elusive. That's one of the really tricky things about this disease is that I've probably treated a dozen or so patients and everybody presents with different symptoms. Usually when you think of rat lungworm disease, you think of meningitis, which is an inflammation around the brain, and the symptoms are usually headache, stiff neck, uh, sensitivity to light, um, just generally feeling weak and tired. Dr. Martell, are you talking about influenza or are you talking about meningitis and rat lungworm disease? Because the symptoms sound pretty much the same. And that's part of what makes it so tricky so that when patients with the meningitis symptoms of this disease show up in the emergency room, they really don't know that they're dealing with this disease. It could be the flu, it could be a migraine, uh, it could be a bad hangover. Um, you know, <laughs> the, the symptoms just are not that specific. However, in the severe cases, often what we see are nerve pain. And it's a very specific pattern of nerve pain, which is people develop areas on their body that become exquisitely sensitive to touch. They can't wear socks, they can't have a sheet on them, the hmm. area will burn, will be incredibly sensitive, and then it'll go away, and you'll get another area that does exactly the same thing. And it becomes this constant movement of pain and sensitivity that is really, really, really difficult for the patients to tolerate. The problem in part is that the exposure can be accidental and people tend to forget so that they come in and they go, I have no clue how I got this. Right. Okay, and they actually don't. So they start looking for unusual or different ways they could have contracted it. But pretty much the evidence is clear that you have to ingest it. You have to eat it. It has to be in water or food. In rats, the worms grow up and they leave. They go away down to the heart and lungs. In humans, for whatever reason, and we really don't know why, they can't get out of your brain. So they grow up, they become adults, and then they try and get out of your brain. And one thing about these worms is that they are very mobile, okay? They move a lot. So if you could think of having 50 mm -hmm. adult worms in your brain that can't get out and don't like it and are moving around all over the place. The State Department of Health is responsible for ensuring that restaurants adhere to sanitation rules. The department's Marlena Dixon says since the Department of Health started keeping track of known cases in 2007, 91 percent of the 42 reported cases occurred on Hawaii Island. Um, we do a number of things. We offer educational presentations for free uh, when requested. I do go out and do some trainings. Um, we have fact sheets online that we also offer to the public. Um, every now and then we do health advisories in the local newspaper. We don't want to con cause panic by continuously printing it, but we do put advisories out there along with prevention methods in that in the advisory. Um, again, our sanitation branch works with the food establishments, not just restaurants, but also farmers markets, um, food trucks. So, you know, every type of food establishment you can think of. Um, and then we also work with the cases themselves, the documented cases. We do an extensive history with them to try to pinpoint where they may have been exposed. Um, and as Dr. Martel says, it's very difficult to try to do that sometimes. Um, the most important thing now is preventing the disease. And Department of Health, Dr. Jarvie and Dr. Martel all agree it takes proper washing of produce. I just want to emphasize that this is a completely 
preventable disease. It would make me enormously happy if I never saw another case. And uh, I think that's just the bottom line.